Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to install Orca 5.0.3 on Windows 11. Um, so this kind of is applicable to most versions of Orca on Windows computers. I'm going to talk through how to get Orca first of all, then I'm going to talk about how to prepare Orca for use. And then after that, I'm going to talk about a few um, maybe system optimizations, which will hopefully make your life a little bit easier whenever you're trying to run calculations using Orca. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you, want, you will want to navigate to the Orca forum, since that is the major distribution point for the Orca uh, system. So... Go, going here, orcaforum.cofo.mpg.de will bring you to this forum here, which is the Orca forum. Uh, if you're a new user, you're going to want to register um, and follow the instructions there to create a username and a password. I have already registered, so I'm just going to log in in order to access the downloads section, which is up here. Uh, if I click on that before I log in, I will not be able to actually access much. So if I go to the downloads, then I can see uh, various different binary versions. So uh, the most recent version is Orca 5.0.3. Um, so that's really uh, where we're going to be going to download everything. So click on that. And inside here, we'll find um, the binaries for the different operating systems. So we have for Windows, we have for Mac, and we have for Linux. So as I'm a Windows user, um, I'm going to be taking the Windows binaries. So you're going to want to download those, uh, each part of those, and then they're going, they're going to be zip drives or zip folders. Uh, so we'll need to unzip those somewhere. And then after that, uh, you'll be able to use the Orca program. There's not an awful lot of installation involved with Orca, which is quite nice. Once you've downloaded the binaries, you're pretty much good to go. Um, the manuals is also a good place to go. Jumpstart guide, also useful. Uh, the manuals are very well written. I recommend them uh, if you're new to using Orca or if you're just new to computational chemistry in general. Uh, there is something here called Avogadro, which is the Orca enhanced version. So this is, um, as far as I can tell, not updated for Orca 5.0. Um, doesn't seem to read the output files very well, um, but it it can still be used to generate input files if you so wish. Um, so here you need to choose the version you want. There only are Mac and Windows versions. You can of course uh, work around that in Linux and probably make use of the Windows version. Um, okay. So once we've downloaded um, the zip drives or the zip folders for the uh, Orca binaries for your chosen system, you're going to want to unzip them in one folder. So I have uh, an Orca folder in my C drive, which is where I've unzipped all of the different. So here were the um, zip drives. So I just un extracted those, unzipped them into this uh, folder and they're all here. So these are all of the different uh, programs that work under the Orca umbrella. The one that we're going to call most often is going to be Orca, and then that will run the different ex executables here, which will um, do various parts of our calculations. There's CAS-CF, there's um, MPI, uh, there's SIPSI, there's various different things in here, there's gradients. Um, but most of the time we'll be calling the Orca program. So once you have that installed, it's now time to try and look at how you might actually use the Orca program. I'm not going to talk about the structure of input files here. I'm not going to uh, discuss that here or the output files. That'll be in a different um, tutorial video. But for now, we can have a look at the uh, running of maybe a simple calculation. So Orca doesn't have, at least the version that I have here, doesn't have a graphical user interface. So you're going to want to um, open up a command window. So in Windows, you right click on the start 
icon and then go to Windows Terminal. At least this is on Windows 11. On Windows 10, I think it opens a command prompt. Here it opens the PowerShell, but um, both can be used to run uh, Orca. So as I've said, um, for Orca, everything is run from the command line. Um, I made myself a working directory, which I called Orca Run, which I positioned on my user's desktop. Um, I have here an input file for Orca, this h2.inp, which is uh, just a hydrogen molecule. So I'm going to navigate to that uh, folder on my desktop. So it starts off here in my user um, folder. So I want to change the directory or change the folder. So I write CD and then I will write desktop desktop and then backslash orca underscore run. And when I click on that, it will change the directory. So I've changed two directories there. I've changed into the desktop and then into the folder within the desktop called orca run. Then if I want to see the contents of that uh, directory, I write dir and directory uh, contents will show up. Press enter. And then I can see here that this matches the contents of the folder that I saw in the Explorer. So I have the h2.imp and I have the Orca manual. Like I said, very uh, useful uh, manual. So if I want to run Orca, the, I guess, most trivial way is just to call Orca directly. So since Orca is in my C drive, I'm going to call it from there. So Orca and then Orca, and then I'm going to run it on my h2.inp uh, file, which is my input file. And then I'm going to direct all of the output, which would normally come into the, the shell itself, into a text file, which will be called h2.out. And you could, you could call it h2.text if you want, but I like the in and out uh, terminology. So once I've written that, I can then press enter to run my program. And it happens very quickly because, well, h2 run with a Hartree-Fock method is, is pretty uh, trivial for something like Orca. So I then end up with um, some of these output files, um, which I will explain in a different tutorial. Um, but for now, uh, we have our input file, we have our output file. Uh, we can open that using um, a text editor um, and you can see the contents here. I will again, as I said, talk about what's in here next time. Okay, um, so that's the sort of um, most basic way to run Orca. Uh, but of course, every time you want to call Orca, you will have to run uh, or write this uh, out. So C, well, for me, in my case, it's on my C drive. Uh, you have to do C colon backslash Orca backslash Orca. Um, in Windows, there's a way to add a variable so that we could just call Orca directly. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to right click on my start uh, and go to system. And then I'm going to go to advanced system settings and then to in environment variables. And then I'm going to change the path or well, not really change it, just add something to that. So I'll click on edit and then I'll click on new and then I'll put in the path to the Orca uh, folder where I unzipped everything. So uh, C, my C drive, colon backslash Orca backslash and then click OK, 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 um, that can stay there. So I'm going to need to open a new um, terminal. So uh, just to make sure that the path has been refreshed. Um, then uh, I do the same thing again. So I change directory, navigate to my desktop, and then to my Orca run folder, which is where we're going to find the H2. Then we're going to call Orca uh, here without doing the C drive. And so hopefully that will work. So yeah, so it's, it's uh, this program requires the name of a parameter file as argument, for example, Orca uh, test.inp. So I can call that on my h2.inp uh, file, um, then do the same thing where I direct the output to h2.out. 
And again, same thing, we have done the calculation um, and we got everything back out again. So we got the output file, we got the six different files that come from uh, an Orca run. So like I said, the output files can be opened in text editors. You can open it in Notepad, um, or in my case, I open it in Sublime Text, but it's really up to you. Um, like I said, this is just a tutorial to cover the sort of basic installation of Orca, um, the contents of input files and output files, and how to analyze the output files and the different information there. I'll talk about it in another video. So thank you for watching and please stay tuned.